Like the finale of your favourite TV show, you can't help but torture yourself with the false hope that it will come back. However, the rumour mill further teases and teases you until you can't take it anymore, and so all hell breaks loose when the rumours are dispelled. So here are 10 cars people will say will be replaced, but probably won't. Honda S2000 Between 1999 and 2009, Honda had the fantastic S2000. The Mighty Roadster had a 2 litre or a 2.2 litre VTEC engine, pushing at 240 brake horsepower, all the way up to 6800 RPM. It had a very well balanced chassis, which murdered corners. Sadly, when the S2000 was killed off in 2009, people couldn't let go of it, and so they believed that it would return. Honda has teased an S2000 comeback, but it has always been false hope. Audi Quattro Between 1981 and 1990, Audi had a rally legend on their hands. The Audi Quattro dominated the rally circuit through the Group B era. The Sport version used a 2.1 litre inline 5, producing 305 brake horsepower. However, once Group B was banned, the Quattro's purpose was also defeated, and so it was slowly killed off and replaced. On two separate occasions, Audi has hinted at Quattro comeback, but both glimmers of hope ended in tragedy. Ford Capri Throughout the 60s and 80s, Ford had the very sleek and very cool Capri. The Capri was very popular and had a very high social status, especially in the UK. Unfortunately, when the coupe fad began to die out, so did the Capri. And so after two mediocre replacements, the European Ford Coupe was gone for good. Faith has slightly been restored though, in the form of the Mustang. Mazda Rotary This one will hurt. Throughout the 70s and 2000s, Mazda had the very unique rotary engine somewhere in its lineup. It was quirky, unique, and awesome. The most heroic of the rotaries was the stunning FD RX7. However, emissions regulations, high maintenance, and poor sales crippled the RX7's successor, the RX8, and so the rotary is dead. Thankfully, at least once a year, Mazda say, Hey, we're making a rotary! But about two months later, they said, nah, why not? Sorry. Who knows when the next rotary will be made at this stage. Subaru SVX. Easily the weirdest Subaru ever made. The SVX was a luxury coupe for the man who wanted to stand out. The SVX used a 3.3 litre straight six, producing 231 brake horsepower. Partner that with four wheel drive, and the SVX was quite the capable machine. With Italian design, the SVX was a guaranteed hit, but a high price tag deemed it unpopular, and so it was discontinued in 1996. We get word that the SVX might return in the rumour mill, but that's as far as it goes. Nissan Silvia, everyone's favourite drifter. The Nissan Silvia was an awesome sports coupe, full of potential and capability. It was fast, awesome and awesome again. However, like the Capri, and sort of the SVX, People lost interest in coupés in the late 90s, and so by 2002, the S15 Silvia was no more. Nissan have teased as Silvia's successor, but it's since gone quiet. Buick Grand National Say, name one badass Buick. The Grand National? Good. Name another. Since the epic GNX, Buick has never really made another cool Buick. Today, Buicks are just rebadged Opals. The most epic Grand National was the GNX which had a turbocharged V6 engine, producing 276 brake horsepower and 360 pound-feet of torque. All hope for a fun Buick seems lost, but Buick trademarked the Grand National name in 2014, so maybe it might return. Honda Prelude Between the 70s and early 2000s, Honda had made the Prelude. This luxury sports car was full of charm and potential. Using the 2.2 litre H22 engine, the Prelude produced 220 brake horsepower. The 5th gen Prelude also had 4 wheel steering and a funky electronic dash. Sadly, like the SVX, the Prelude just wasn't selling and so in 2001 it was deceased. To make matters worse, no news has been made about a potential replacement. Mitsubishi 3000 GT Throughout the 90s, one of the fastest road cars was a Mitsubishi. The 3000 GT used a 3 litre twin turbo V6, producing 300 brake horsepower. 
It had all-wheel drive and it was filled with technology and all kinds of gizmos. Production ran up until 2000, where reliability issues and poor sales ended the 3000 GT's reign. Personally, I don't think that the 3000 GT needs a replacement, because realistically, if it does get one, there will be a hybrid crossover, just like the Eclipse and the future Evo. Ford Cosworth When it came to fast Fords, there was a guarantee that it had some backing from the legendary tuners at Cosworth. The RS200, Escort RS Cosworth and the Sierra Cosworth are just some fine examples of Cosworth's savagery. Today, Ford does make some fast cars, like the Focus RS and the new GT. But sadly, Cosworth has had no involvement in the development of these cars. No matter how good these cars are, Cosworth probably would have made them better. 